system maintenance. Hello students. Welcome to lecture number 8. So we are seeing about the unit 2 about the bus and bus standard bus architecture. So in this video we are going to see about the bus architecture. We all know that if the system built or something is being made, its architecture perform a main role. Without architecture, we cannot define anything. So we are going to study about the bus architecture that how the bus are designed and how they are made to place where they are how they will function so isa that is industry standard architecture means it is a common standard that every company will follow that the slot or a function that in normal every company will manufacture that user will will cannot struggle to find a particular uh, port or slot or devices to connect means all the company would manufacture the same standard for the user compatibility so industry standard architecture it was created in 1981 from now 39 years ago, it was created by an IBM company suppressed by PCI that AGP that are the slots that PCI slots in 1993 and AGP slot in 1996. And it was wide in bits where's 8 bits and 16 bits means ISA standard slots come in compatible with 8 bits and 16 bit in early days and we can attach we have seen in the board that the expensive slots are there that we can uh, add a devices up to six numbers and speed of the 8 bit or 16 bit was 18 MB per second and ISA slot style was parallel it was not serial but it functioned as a parallel connectors it doesn't have a hot plug-in interface and it doesn't have an external interface so in this picture we are seeing about the 8-bit and five, uh, one 8 bit slot and five 16 bit ISA slot in a motherboard. So this is a standard type of slot in a motherboard that we are using before. Still we are using uh, also now the ISA standard only. So now we will see about the introduction to bus architecture. In computer architecture, a bus is a communication system that transfer data between component inside a computer or between a computer. Means the information, the communication goes within a computer or between, a, uh, between two different computers that is called the use of bus architecture this expression covers all related hardware components and software including communication protocols early computer buses were parallel electrical wires 
with multiple hardware connections but the term is now used for any physical arrangement that provides the same logical function as the parallel electrical bus modern computer buses can use both parallel and serial connection and can be wired in either a multi drop or as in a case of usb means uh, previously only pa parallel connections or uh, parallel slots were only introduced in the early days of motherboard but today in the modern design pc or motherboard that the board parallel and serial ports or slots are coming together as per the use the user can use them an early computer might contained a hand wired cpu of vacuum tubes a magnetic drum for main memory and a punch tape and printer for reading and writing data respectively a modern system might have a multi core cpu that comes with ddr4 sd ram for memory a solid state drive that ssd for secondary storage this is a latest hard drive that now a very modern uh, computers or laptops were coming with a graphics card and lcd as a display system a mouse and keyboard for interaction and a wifi connection for networking computer buses of one form or another move data between all of these devices means computer uh, means bus used to transfer the data within all the components within a comp uh, all the, between all the com components of the computer in most tra traditional computer architecture the cpu and main memory tends to be tightly coupled a microprocessor and conventionally is a single chip which has a number of electrical connection on its pins that can be used to select an address in the main memory and another another set of pins to read and write the data stored at that location in most cases the cpu and memory share signaling characteristics and operates in synchrony the bus connecting the cpu and the memory is one of the defining characteristics of the system and often referred to supply as the system bus it is possible to allow peripherals to communicate with memory in the same fashion attaching adapters in the form of expansion cards directly to the system bus this is commonly accomplished through some sort of standardized electrical connectors several of this forming an expansion bus or local bus however as the performance differences between the cpu and the peripheral varies widely some solution is generally needed to ensure that peripherals do not slow over all system performance many cpu features a second set of pins similar to those for communicating with memory but able to operate at very different speed and using different protocols other use smart controllers to place the data directly in memory 
a concept known as direct memory access. Most modern systems combine both solutions where appropriate. As the number of potential peripherals grew, using an expansion card for every peripheral becomes increasingly untenable. This has led to the introduction of the bus system designed specifically to support multiple peripherals. This bus system is mainly introduced to support multiple peripherals at the same time. In single USB connection, we can use or single path, we can use multiple devices at the same time. Common examples are the SATA, that is serial ATA port in modern computers, means we can add uh, it doesn't have uh, different different uh, wires for a single bit but it has seven pins that operates everything as a, a universal serial bus which uh, this uh, SATA port in a modern computers which allow a number of hard drives to be connected without the need for a card means it will not need any support of a card to access the hard drive this high performance system are generally too expensive to implement in low end devices like a mouse this has led to the parallel development of a number of low performance bus system for these solutions the most common example being the standardized universal serial bus USB. All such examples they may be referred to the as a peripheral buses, although this terminology is not universal. Now, in modern system, the performance differences between the CPU and the main memory has grown so great that increasingly among the high speed memory is built directly into the CPU that memory known as a catch memory means catch memory we know that having a fast access time uh, for the processor in such system CPU communicate using high performance buses that operate at speed much greater than memory and communicate with memory using protocols similar to this used solely for peripherals in the past. System buses are also used to communicate with most of the other peripherals, means almost all the peripherals are, are communicate using a bus system through adapters which in turn talk to other peripherals and controllers. Such systems are architecturally more similar to multi computers communicating over a bus rather than a network. And these cases expansion buses are entirely separate and no longer share any architecture with their host CPU. But what would have formerly been the system was now often known as a front side bus. As we seen in a previous video, front side bus used to control the processor uh, and the primary memory like catch memory and RAM and AGP ports because it is a front side bus used to communicate is a medium to communicate or transfer data between the processor and the primary memory and front bus is also connected to a south bus which controls all the peripherals so Other common categorized systems are based on the bus's primary role, connecting devices internally or externally, 
like PCI or SESI for instance. Now we will see about the service of bus architecture. The service bus architecture. We have seen that architecture means it is a overview or how the systems are exactly working or for how systems are made to work that we can understand by the architecture. So it will show the overview that how exactly the parts and the components are arranged and they are functioning. So the service bus here is a gateway and there is a storage. So here is a if we use a gateway it will store the data and it's part to the partition one messaging broker. Like that it will store a data in different parts or register but it all connected to it each other but here bus architecture what it will do all are connected in the same path but the information that are shared have a location address that from where it has to access from where it has to be sent so if a gateway stores if the gateways want to access the data from the partition 3 the partition 3, 4, 2 and 1 are connected in the same path which is called bus. The signal will go and collect the data from the partition 3 and easily get to the gateway. It will not harm the other partition because its uh, information or a communication, the data having the address from where it has to be accessed. So it will not able to access or it will never access from partition 1 and partition 2 because it doesn't have an address of that it have an address of only the partition 3 if it uh, uh, data or information having the address of partition 4 the uh, it will access to the partition 4 but it will not access to uh, partition, partition 1 2 or 3 so the rest of the things that we will see in the next video the continuing of this part so in this video we have seen about the bus architecture and the service of bus architecture that the how bus inside the computer is functioning how the bus is designed inside a computer Thank you.